Here's a lantern that's lost his light. He should look the brand new McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Dark Knight's Metal Dread Lantern. Following the defeat of the Anti-Monitor, only one Earth remained, but which Earth? In one timeline, Earth 1 Superman prevented Earth 2 Superman from going into final battle, but in the Dark Multiverse, it was Jor-El of Earth 2 who survived. When the powerful demon Sator sought to destroy this new Earth, Green Lantern Alan Scott struck an unthinkable deal to protect his planet and its inhabitants. In exchange for Earth's safety, Alan volunteered to serve as the Demon's Herald. The former Green Lantern now serves and guides Sutura and his armies to unknowing worlds, bringing Ragnarok to trillions upon trillions as the terrible Dread Lantern. If you're going to make a deal with a demon, make sure you check the fine print first. Before we get a closer look at the DC Multiverse Dark Knight's Metal Dread Lantern, which is a gold label edition figure, let's grab first the tape measure and see how tall the figure stands. If we include technically the flames that jet out his eyes, which are non-removable, you're looking at the figure being about 7 inches in height, or the figure's going to be 18 centimeters tall. Speaking of gold label edition figures, here's what the Dread Lantern looks like with the earlier looked at DC vs. Vampire's gold label edition Superman, who in this time around actually doesn't seem that small at all. When we did do the review of him, I compared him along with the DC Vampire's Batman, who was already a big Batman to start off with, and this Superman seems small by comparison. He's actually exactly the same size when you compare him now with Dread Lantern. As a side note, when we had a look at the DC Vampire's Superman, I did make the comparison. His face looked a little like Jerry Lee Lewis. I meant to say Jerry Lewis, not the, not the guy who was playing the piano, sing Great Balls of Fire, but rather instead the comedian. Uh, another comparison also I did want to bring in, I wanted to bring in the Green Lantern, so in this case I did want to bring in Jon Stewart to, see, to show you guys again that he's about the same size as Dread Lantern here. Maybe not great balls of fire, but Dread Lantern comes with a big blade of fire. Before we talk a little bit about that, though, how was that for a segue? First, the figure comes in clear with a circular black display stand that, yes, does still have a DC logo printed down below, and still, yes, manages to have one single peg that can plug into the underside of Dread Lantern's boots. Whenever I say Dread Lantern, I always think of the Dread Pirate Roberts from the Bride of the Princess Bride. I don't know why I'm thinking that compares. I guess he looks a little bit like Wesley. We're going to I'll probably talk more about that in a moment, but I'm going to move that to the side. That's what we'll do. That's what we'll do. Figure also comes included with a trading card. I do like the look of this trading card quite a lot. I like the way they've actually outlined this. Now, obviously, this is source material, so they're taking this from an actual uh, illustration inside the pages of the comic book, uh, specifically the comic book being Dark Knight's Metal, seen down below there. On the back, though, a very, very long read-up. I took the liberty already of reading that for you guys. If you'd like to still pause it and read for yourself, you're more than happy to it if you'd like. We move that to the side. Going though back to the Blades of Fire, the figure comes in clue with quite a cool looking blade. The blade itself is a fairly soft plastic, not enough that you'd really have to worry that it's going to become rubbery and, and out of shape when you get this out of the tray. But uh, it does have a little bit of durability to it, like a little bit of density to it. I do like the way they've actually colored this, mostly using a, an orange translucent plastic. Maybe not as translucent to the point where I can actually run my hand behind it. And then they've also tipped some of it, frosted it nicely in yellow as well. Now, he only has means to store it, and that's only on this one side here. That's the only hand that actually allow, will allow him to hold the blade. The other hand actually is closed-fisted, and it has currently right now the Green Lantern ring. Uh, picking up the figure for right now, let's go ahead and get the blade in his hand. The blade, actually hand-wise, the plastic that they've used for the, the fingers and the palm is pretty soft. Uh, the only downside, though, unfortunately, too, is by taking the blade and trying to fit it into his hand, it doesn't really seem like the hand holds it as well as it should. You may even then have to go back and heat the hand just a little bit in hot water to maybe close the grip in, close the grip in just a little bit more so he holds it a little bit better. Like it sits, it sits okay. It's just a little floppy, that's all. Uh, the, of course, this does match nicely the color that he has projected out the sides of the, around the tops of his eyes. I already mentioned though that these are not removable. I would have loved if we could have gotten ourselves like a Golden Age Green Lantern. I'm sure at some point we will. That's probably going to be using a very similar body to this. But like in this case, you can't actually take the eyes out or take the flames out. Those are permanently attached to the figure's face. I did already mention the fact that the figure does have the Green Lantern ring. You can see it right there. Not only have they taken the time to paint it, but they have also sculpted it. So it's not literally just a glob of green paint on the fingers. I'm glad whenever companies take the time to actually sculpt the finer details. And that is the ring itself. It looks really good, though, on the figure. 
Go ahead for right now and let's remove the blade. We'll just put that to the side, getting now a closer look at the figure. I really think, first of all, like that's a good looking head sculpt. And I don't think you have yet to get really another version of Alan Scott than one we get right here. I'd have to go back and maybe double check. There is maybe a figure that I've yet to pick up, but I do really like the look of this one quite a bit. You really, unfortunately, get robbed the chance to kind of see his eyes. You only get to really chance to see his mask that's underneath here. And then, of course, sticking, jetting out, projecting out from that is, of course, the flames that he has. The flames, again, are using sort of more of, again, translucent yellow plastic, frosted and colored a little bit with the additional orange. The face and the skin tone is a little on the paler side, but I think it kind of works well to the color scheme that they actually chose for the figure. Of course, primarily he does have purple, purple, red, and a little bit of green down below here as well. And I think all the colors that they chose are really fitting colors for this particular character. Of course, he does have the little symbol there on the front of his chest. Really nice additional use of gold that he has to attach the cape, of course, onto the top of his shoulders. And like the cape itself is a really nice sculpted cape. It's long too. So even if you have some difficult time to get the figure to stand, he sort of can cheat a little bit by actually resting onto the actual, not this portion of the cape, because this cape actually, this part sticks a little bit further up, but this area right here seems to be the sweet spot that you can actually have the figure resting against that. But I do like the look of the cape. The cape has been molded quite well. It looks to me like there's a little bit of a darker color that they've added in there as well. We can just flip the cape up, look under the hood, for example, and show you guys they have sculpted really nice additional wrinkles and all the stuff that would naturally drape on fabric if it's fitting over top of a muscular frame muscular frame wise he actually has a decent build to him again about the same sort of build as the vampire superman we looked at before he has all these spikes there on his gauntlet that match the color nicely that he has to the front cape things i don't know if they would technically have a name i'm sure somebody that's an expert in capes could tell me down below in the comment section but the little snaps that snap his cape to the rest of the figure's body. He does have, again, like the sculpting of the belt down below here. That's nicely. It's kind of looking like there really isn't any paint to it. Probably they've just molded in black plastic, but at least they've actually painted this part of the belt, the buckle in the same sort of matching gold that he has in all the other places that I've mentioned before. I do like the coloring of the green. The green quite works really quite well with sort of this brownish burgundy that they've used that not only is in the, in the top area, but it's also in the boot area down below here as well. Like it's a really nice looking figure. You know, if to go to the extent of actually talking a little bit about, well, we'll bring back the card in maybe in this instance, I think maybe they probably could have gone even more to the extreme. I, obviously, he already has the flames coming out of his eyes, but I would have also given him an angrier expression on his face. Not unless the plan is probably to use this head sculpt again for a more just traditional looking Alan Scott. Maybe that's probably going to be the case. For the figure's articulation, going back to his head, I guess we really haven't left his head. We're going to still stay with the head. The head is on a ball joint, so it can hinge up. It can hinge down. It's a little harder because, of course, you got the color of the cape in the way, but you can move it back and forth. Just the only thing being be careful of is just you don't want to clip this. If this is a figure that you store away for a while after maybe you deciding you don't want to have this guy on your shelf anymore, I, I would imagine like these flames are going to probably get a little bit more warped. As it is right now, they look really good on the figure, though. I just kind of wish that he could have had an alternate head sculpt or maybe just an angrier experience head sculpt maybe not one that's necessarily showing eyes but maybe one that's showing just a little bit more teeth than what he has right now uh, for the figure's arms the arms do come out easily at 90 degrees and even though he does have a cape the cape doesn't really limit as much the articulation i was expecting in the shoulders you can rotate the arms all the way around the figure has a bicep swivel the figure also does have a double hinge on the elbow good to see that and the hands rotate all the way around for the upper torso, it is on a ball joint, and I'm probably sure you guys can already see he has quite a generous ball joint at the base of his abdomen area. Legs do split out once again. They are ratcheted joints. Going for the derogatory shot of inside his thighs, just to show you get the way they've actually sculpted the plastic in there. It gives you a nice ratcheted joint for the legs. You can take the legs and move forward. You can move them back. There's a mild swivel at the top of the thigh, really not there for posability, but more of the way the factory assembled the, fi the figure. He has a double hinge on the knee. It's good to see that. No articulation, though, to the boots. The boot is basically just one continuous sculpt to the rest of his calf. So I'm guessing they probably have gone in here and painted the boot and left, well, it would have painted over top of the green plastic that they molded for the rest of the figure's legs. Then again, for the ankles, they move back and forth this way. You can rock it back and forth this way. And the figure does also have, yes, toe articulation. All in all, a good looking figure. Uh, again, like, I think this might be the only time we have ourselves an Alan Scott. You can correct me if I'm wrong down below in the comment section. I don't remember ever seeing this guy being released 
of course, not being changed, of course, into Dread Lantern. But as it goes for Dread Lantern, he's a nice looking figure. The only thing, unfortunately, he lacks a little bit in is not necessarily the details to his suit, nor the sculpting of the cape. But I think I just would have used a different head sculpt. I like the flames. That's, of course, one thing that goes along with the Dread Lantern. But I think I would have given him a more angry expression than maybe what he has right now. The only thing, the only other thing I would have changed that figure. That's it. All in all, though, from head to toe, it's a really nice release from the folks over at McFarlane Toys. Gold edition figures tend to be, quote, variants of figures that we've already gotten before. And sometimes it's just the case that they tweak the paint, they tweak the colors, or in some cases, they retool brand new heads. With the case, though, with Alan Scott, it's the opposite way around. The, quote, variant this time around, in fact, is the first time that we're getting this mold. And just recently announced, McFarlane's team has said, like, the newest wave of figures coming out, one of which being the Golden Age Green Lantern Alan Scott, which seems to be using the same mold that we get here with Dread Lantern, brightening up, of course, the colors and adding some interior green to his cape. And it looks to be also the case that they're using the same head sculpt, which is strange because looking at a figure like this, I would have suspected that this is a mold case where they already had the mold in their inventory. They had already long since released the figure and they're just releasing again with the flames coming out of the eyes. But it seems to be the other way around this time. Now, it looks also to be the case that the, because they are using the same head sculpt might be also one of the reasons why. Even though I did want this guy to have a more angry expression on his face, it looks like they're probably going to be using the same head sculpt between this one and the recently or will to be released, the Alan Scott Green Lantern. But either way, I'm really excited for that upcoming Green Lantern, Alan Scott. La along with the announcements, they did also say that they're going to be doing another Blue Beetle, a classic Blue Beetle, a Golden Age Superman. But the one that I was the most interested in, and I can't wait to finally add back to my collection, because I originally had, I think, a DC Direct version of him, but we are going to be getting a DC Multiverse Anti-Monitor. I can't wait for that one. But in going back, though, to the Alan Scott here, again, it's kind of interesting that this time around we're getting the variant first, and then we're getting, like, the traditional character second. What do you guys, though, think of, of Dread Lantern? I think all in all, he's a nice looking figure. What I will be looking forward, though, is seeing what the, the regular Golden Age Green Lantern is going to look like. And obviously, when I get the chance to pick up that figure, I'm going to be bringing back in Dread Lantern. We'll do the comparisons between the two. I think most of the comparisons will probably be just cosmetic color changes. I don't think they're going to be changing anything at all. It even seems to be the case, looking at the head sculpts, that this one is going to be looking really no different than the one that we're about to be getting. But I'm still really excited for that Alan Scott Green Lantern. What, what do you guys, though, think of this one? Is this, though, a worthy candidate for picking up, even though now we already know that we are going to be getting ourselves another Alan Scott in the pipeline? Is this, though, still a figure that you'd like to add to your collection? Let me know down below in the comments section. Also, as well, if you guys enjoyed this video, by the way, why not hit it with a like? If you guys are loving the content you guys are seeing and you certainly do want to stick around for more, why don't you hit that subscribe button down below? Sure, good idea. Why don't you turn on, as well, the bell notification so you're always going to get those notifications every single time a new video posts. And speaking of new videos, we are also going to be looking at some more DC Multiverse stuff. So if that's the kind of thing you like to regularly come back to this channel for come back regularly because there's definitely going to be a lot more videos coming your way. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.